Welcome back to The Messy Cook. Today I'm making Christmas craft. This is my sister Becky's recipe, so thank you Becky. This one's dedicated to you. Uh, I've had a few different um, Christmas craft recipes through the years, and uh, this one by far is the absolute best I've ever had. Uh, I'll show you the recipe here. My handwriting is terrible because I kind of wrote this down quickly last year. So what we're going to need is one sleeve of saltines. Um, that's 42 crackers for this pan. One cup of butter. Uh, salted or unsalted, it's up to you. One cup of brown sugar, 12 ounces of chocolate chips, which equals out to be two cups of chocolate chips of any kind you want. One cup of scorbits if you're in Canada. And if you're in the US, it's one cup of Heath bits or an eight ounce package, which is a little over a cup, but I like the extra bits on the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat our oven to 350, which is already on. We're gonna line a large part, or sorry, a large baking pan with parchment paper, which I've done. And I have a lump of butter here, and we need to grease this. So I'm just going to rub it along and get this all greased up. And uh, then we're gonna lay out the crackers and we're gonna lay them salt side up. Now when you buy saltines, I'll show you here what I have. These are what I bought, I bought Premium Plus. You can use no name brand, it doesn't really matter, but use the salted tops, please. Uh, it gives you just that little bit extra um, flavor in there, almost like a salted karma when you get those score bits in there. So you just want to make sure you use that. You can also use, um, I've had Christmas cracks that people use graham cracker cookies with. So you can use those if you prefer those over the saltines. And you know, some people just don't like the idea of the saltine and the saltiness. So feel free to use that if you want. So I'm going to just toss out that other little bit of butter. I have... Uh, the original recipe called for one sleeve, which was supposed to be 42, but everything, of course, is going down in size in the grocery store. So what I want to do is do saltine, or sorry, salt side up for these crackers, and I'm just going to place them along. I'm hoping to fit, it looks like I'm going to go five across, so I'll get these right dead center to stay right on the parchment. I'm going to continue um, and lie these all out. Okay, so I've got these all lined up here. I ended up using, I think, 38 crackers, something like that. I don't know. But anyhow, just fill it up until uh, your pan gets full. And what we're going to do next is we're going to mix the butter and brown sugar. I didn't have vanilla on there. I'm going to put half a teaspoon of vanilla in just to flavor it a little bit. Um, that'll be nice. So these are the Heath Bits. Um, they're exactly like score bits. It's just the U.S. brand. Um, we tried to find score bits here in Canada and can't find them. So I went to the States and I lucked out and found uh, these Heath bits. So that's what we're going to use. I have um, two cups of milk chocolate chips. So we're going to get to this after. Uh, next, uh, we're going to leave this here. I do have it on uh, just a towel. Uh, because once we've done the caramel part, we're going to pour it over the top and we don't want to burn the counter. It's going to be super hot. All right, so I'm going to turn this on to oh, about medium high heat. I'm going to put in two pounds of butter, so two sticks of butter or a half a pound of butter, or you can just measure out into a cup, whatever you have. Um, you, I suppose you could use margarine for this, but you're going to get a much better place, flavor Sorry, with butter so I would recommend just going with the butter if you can. Um, I'm using salted butter it doesn't say either way but I think salted butter is better because it does give that little bit to, along with the salt on the crackers it's going to give a little bit of that salted caramel flavor so we're going to get that in we're going to melt it down and then we're going to add in uh, once that's melted I'm going to add in the brown sugar we're going to stir that up um, we're going to bring it to a boil for three minutes uh, once it starts to boil, that I think is going to be the point. Shake my this down to medium. Um, I think that's the point where I'm going to put the vanilla in. So I'm going to let this continue to melt and we'll come right back. Okay, so the butter is melted. I'm going to add in a cup of brown sugar. I've packed this brown sugar. So this is what packed means. If you don't know, you're just going to press uh, the brown sugar and you're going to keep pressing it down until it's compact. This is why it came out in one big piece. And you're going to press that uh, and make sure your cup is full. So we're going to continue to cook this here. And we're going to just stir and stir and stir and stir. And I think what I'll do is I will put the vanilla in at this point. I'm going to switch from a wooden spoon. Um, and I'm going to switch over to a whisk because it will be easier to mix. Get a whisk over here. This way we don't have any sugar lumps. 
you can see that or not, it's not really doing too much, doesn't look too fancy right now, but basically we're making caramel um, without the cream. If you're making uh, caramel for um, ice cream, you could basically do the same recipe, uh, boil it, and then you add a little bit of whipping cream to it at the end. I don't have exact measurements, but uh, you would just do that, let it cool, and you have caramel. So I'm going to add in just a half a teaspoon of nice vanilla. You can use any type of vanilla you want. And this is, again, I've used this one all the time when I got from Mexico. So it just tastes nicer. This is pure. So we're just going to continue to mix this. I will bring it to a boil. And I'm going to let that um, boil for three minutes continuously stirring because you don't want that sugar to burn. If it burns, you just wasted a pound of butter. And we don't want to do that. I'm going to show you here. This has finally come together. Continuously whisk. You can see that this caramel is coming together. And if I stop stirring for a second, it's come to a boil. So I'm going to put my timer on for three minutes. And we want to let this simmer. At, make sure it's got a little bit of a boil. This keeps bubbling. You want to do that for three minutes straight. And then I have moved, as you can see, sorry for the camera work here. Um, I've moved the crackers over on the buttered parchment. Um, you can use a sill pad as well. I think it's just easier instead of trying to move the camera and everything. So uh, this will be going in the oven afterwards. So uh, we're going to let this boil for three minutes and come right back. Okay, so this caramel is just about uh, done. Three minutes. So I think I have four seconds left. And I'll finish stirring here. There we go. So let's turn this off. I'm going to show you what this caramel looks like. This is amazingly delicious. Still bubbling. Be very careful. It's super hot, and if you burn your hands, you're going to end up at the hospital having to get uh, get all bandaged up. So it's not a pleasant experience. So I'm just going to tap that off. It smells wonderful. Please do not be tempted to lick it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and I want to drizzle this caramel as evenly as possible over. You're not going to get it perfect, but we're going to use a spatula. Just kind of get that over the crackers. Just make sure it's kind of close to the edges. And turn the pot the other way just to get this caramel out. Sorry, you can't see that, but we're going to plop that out. Get this kind of over here. This will harden quick in the pot, so we're going to set this aside. And I will put the water in a minute. So we want to take this caramel and just use the tip of the spatula here and get this spread around. Now, like I said, well, maybe one day I'll do a caramel sauce. It's a very similar process, uh, but you just add cream to the, oops, to the caramel at the end. We wanna to try to keep those crackers together. Yeah, this is already thickening out quick, so I'm gonna to try to move as fast as I can. I'll get this all spread out. All right, so I've got this spread out. This is going to go in the oven. It's not perfect all the way to the edges, but I think that's fine because we're going to put this in the oven at 350 and then we're going to bake this for five minutes. So I'm going to pop this in, pop the timer on, and then we're going to come back. Put it on the middle rack of your oven, so right dead center, timer for five, and let it bake, and then we're going to get it out and finish it up. Okay, this is just about to bake. Five minutes is up. There we go, timer off. I'm gonna turn the oven off because we're not gonna need it on anymore. We're gonna take this out and I'll spread out a little bit more, which is perfect. And I'm gonna move that over. So I'm gonna bring this in. This is really hot. You can see on the top here, close how it's all bubbling. So that chocolate's just caramelized a little bit more. Really gonna be delicious. So we're gonna let that go. I'm going to keep my oven mitt on for a moment and just try to see if I can spread just a tiny bit more over here. Perfect. We don't really want the cracker edges hanging out, but, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Who said uh, delicious is perfect? Like, everything that looks perfect is delicious. You can have the most delicious looking things and they taste horrible, but I guarantee and promise you this is amazing. So, what we're going to do is, like I said, I have two cups of chocolate chips. I'm using milk. Use milk, white, semi-sweet, uh, dark, a mixture, you can do whatever you like. You want to sprinkle these all over the top just to cover the whole thing. And the purpose of this, you're going to let this sit afterwards. This chocolate is going to melt from the heat of the pan and the caramel. Just a little bit more just to get down on those edges. We have it 
All right, it's about as even as possible. I'm not going to spread it out with my hands. I'm just going to leave it. Use this just to get a couple of piles I have there and get those ones on. We're going to let this sit for five minutes. Again, I'll put the timer on. Already it's melting. <laughs> and we're going to show you the next step at five minutes. Okay, so the five minutes is up and it looks like the chocolate chips have melted. So what we're going to do is we want to just... You can see how they're all shiny. Let me let me go in close here while I do this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press this along and you'll see the melted chocolate chips are just going to spread. So we want to just kind of go all the way around, spread this evenly. I hope you can see here. I'll go this way. It's a little bit easier. And spread it as even as possible throughout. So this is actually a pretty quick process. This is actually a good place too where you can spread around anything, the corners that you miss just to get covered a little bit. So I'll do that here. And this actually is gonna be really amazing. Can't wait to try this. The nice thing about Christmas Crack is up to this point, basically follow the recipe. Like I said, adjust the chocolate, what type of chocolate you wanna use. I love milk chocolate, so I generally use it in most things. I mean, I like dark chocolate and white chocolate, but for things like this, I really, I think, you know, milk is just universally, you know, liked by a lot of people and it always goes over really well. So we've got that all spread out, like that on the edge. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lick that later because that's my treat. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these Heath bits. Now this is the point where you can change the recipe to whatever you want, you know, make it for the season, whatnot. So I'm gonna take these Heath bits and I'm gonna Sprinkle a very generous amount. Oops, sweep the floor up there. Messy is my name, so I expect a little bit of mess each time I do a recipe. So I'm gonna just continue to sprinkle these. Like I said, I like a good, decent amount. So every bite is gonna have a nice little chunk of the caramel in there. It's a good, like if you've never had um, Heath bits or, or uh, a score bar or a Heath bar. This basically is just a, a toffee caramel and uh, it's crunchy and delicious. And so that salt, I'm just gonna spread this up a little bit here cause I didn't get it quite enough to the edge. So we'll see what's just kind of flaking around. Um, there we go. So that's basically it. We're gonna let this cool for, I'm gonna take it and set it aside in a cooler place. I'm gonna let it set for about an hour. Like I said, up to the point before you add the Heath Bits, uh, make it your own. Add Heath Bits you can, or, or Score Bits. You can do uh, crushed up candy canes. You can do uh, sprinkles, nuts. Um, if you want to chop up, put on uh, candy kisses or crunch up humbugs. Like whatever, whatever you like, that's what you want to top it with. So I'm going to leave this to cool for an hour or so. I'm going to come back and check it. And when it's ready, I'm going to show you um, how we get it all broken apart, show you what it looks like, and this gets stored in the fridge. So I'll let this cool and we'll be back. Okay, so this is chilled. I did put it in the fridge as it was uh, because I'm cooking dinner. It's been a little bit warm in the house, so it didn't cool down very quickly. But um, this is the Christmas crack, and literally it just breaks apart in pieces. So just cut it up, break it up. You can see here in the bottom, all the caramel is underneath. Lots of thick chocolate, heath bits on the top, and that's it. You're all set. So I'm just gonna have a little piece. Let's see. Mmm. Oh my god. That's really good. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Crack this up. It does uh, refrigerate very well. Freezer as well. Excuse me, freezer as well. Got all the heath bits in it out. And now yeah, keep following. I'm gonna come up with a couple more recipes. I'm uh, going to be doing some shortbread, so I'm going to try to get that up in a few more days so you have it before Christmas and you can try them. So thank you for joining me. Don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button, share my page with your friends, and hopefully you find something you like. Let me know what you think of the recipe. Have a very Merry Christmas if we don't come back for a while, and we'll see you soon. Take care.